Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is CJ. Gonna give you guys another reef update. Now, if you've been following me, you know these last few vids really been focused on, you know, upgrading my test kits, you know, testing my water, and trying to find out exactly where my tank is. Now, unfortunately, my phosphate test kit that I received from, you know, API and Saliford, they just were not doing it for me and were not accurate enough. So I decided to go ahead and open the wallet up and get the best checker that I can find and ended up being this one. A lot of research led me to this HANA checker. It's actually a uh, ultra low phosphorus checker, not a phosphate checker. So there's a few reasons I chose this. So we're gonna cover that this vid. We're gonna cover the results and hopefully uncover that question a lot of you all been asking me about the algae scrubber. You know, what are my thoughts? Do you think it's working? You know, is it worth it for my tank? Is it too big? Is it too small? You know, what's the mystery behind this thing? And you know, tests don't lie. And that's what we're gonna find out good or bad i always keep it real with you guys so let's get to the bottom of it so as far as first impressions go let me say this first this is my first time making this type of investment you know as far as my test kits honestly thinking back i probably should have done this a long time ago considering how much money i've invested as far as corals and livestock i really should have been you know on top of my test kits and staying in better tune with my tank so let's cover all the pros, at least all the good things that I recognize right off the bat with this HANA checker. You know, the biggest one is eliminating the eye test as far as color changes. You know, dealing with the salad for kits and the reagent and, you know, putting a drop, swirling it, same thing with the Red Sea test. The color change is always a little off. You know, did I put another extra drop here or, you know, put too much in it there? You don't have to worry about that with these tests. That's the good thing. Now, the bad thing is there's still a ton of room for human error with this test. You know, I didn't realize it until I actually ran through it a few times. And I say a few times because, you know, I wasted at least two or three packs of reagent doing it wrong or, you know, getting a bad result that I couldn't trust until I got it right. So the two main problems that I've noticed, the first one being the fingerprints or any oil that you leave on the test valves themselves completely throw off your test. So to try to eliminate that, you know, I've actually put on gloves and wiped off each valve with a lint-free towel that was the best thing that i could figure out to you know keep them clean now i also did not dip the test valves in the tank at all I actually used the salad for syringes measured out the amount of water that it needed added it to the valves that way it kept them completely dry and made it that much easier to keep them clean now the second issue i've noticed is going to be the reagent powder now i did some homework before this and i've kind of read people having issues with it and i was thinking hey they're just doing it wrong or whatever the case may be but after trying to open up multiple packets you know flicking the packets making sure i make all the powder settle to the bottom cutting it open folding it the right way like a cone and dumping it in the test valve still noticed you know i didn't get it all out there was still dust on the inside of the pack in the corners there's still some there and considering this test kit measures in parts per billion i really feel like even the smallest you know bit of powder left over in that pack can really throw off your test a bunch. So honestly, if they can come out with some kind of liquid reagent, I think that would make this leaps and bounds better. But other than that, you know, it's just a small inconvenience, honestly, a huge inconvenience when it comes to accuracy, but I'm working around it and trying to figure it out. You know, one test at a time, I'm getting better and better. And honestly, I've ran through about five or six packets, just testing it out and trying different ways of getting that powder out the best way. So with that being said, I'm pretty much never going to just trust one single test result with this HANA checker. I'm always going to measure it multiple times and average it together. Not only that, I'm actually using two different reagent kits. One that came with the HANA checker itself, and then the other that came from my refill. I figured, you know, with so much variance that can happen between reagent packs and me messing up with human error, just go ahead and throw it all together and measure it and average it out. So that's pretty much what I did. Ended up with close to six parts per billion. Now, after you do the conversion as a formula, multiply your result by 3.066, I believe, and then divide that by a thousand, and it pretty much converts it. But for those who don't wanna worry about the math, they actually have charts available, and here goes a rough result of what you're gonna get. Six parts per billion, if you look at this chart, puts me right below 0.03, which is the recommended maximum that you should keep a reef tank at for your phosphates in your aquarium. So keep in mind, for anyone that are wondering, you know, is my tank algae free or what's going on with my system? This is the results, guys. So we're gonna talk a little more about it. So how does that number translate to my reef tank? 
You know, that's a question I ask myself and I'm still researching, you know, still doing my homework as far as what phosphate levels I should have in my tank. You know, I know I'm below the amount that grows algae, but what's the perfect amount for corals? You know, that's the next step. Those are the next questions I'm going to ask myself and challenge myself to get answers to. But as far as my equipment goes and my filtration goes, now this is where it's going to get interesting these next few weeks. Keep in mind, for those that follow me, you may already know this. I did run Fosgard on my system pretty much since day one until here recently. You know, I didn't replace it for about two or three months, actually over three months, pretty much to where it was exhausted and I knew it wasn't doing anything on my tank. It was just there. So at this point, I've completely cleaned out the reactor, removed the Fosgard. It's been out of my tank for the last two weeks. And the only thing I've been running as far as phosphate removal has been my algae scrubber. So here goes the million dollar question. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me this a lot here recently. You know, what are your thoughts on the algae scrubber, man? Should I get one? Or is it working for you? You know, is it helping your tank? Well, honestly, I've been putting off this answer for weeks for you guys because I didn't want to jump to conclusions without some kind of number, some kind of, you know, respected test kit to justify my, you know, my feelings about it. So can't put it off anymore, guys. Let's go ahead and dive into it. So a quick filtration reminder for anyone that's new to my channel. The only thing I'm running is Seachem's Pond Matrix for my biological filtration, Seachem's Carbon for my chemical filtration, a Tunzi skimmer, and my algae scrubber. That's it. So with those four things being the only thing that's been on my tank and running for the last, I would say, four months or so effectively, which one do you think will be responsible for phosphate removal? So what's my final thoughts? Without a doubt, definitely a believer in the algae scrubber, guys. You know, I know my tank more than anyone else, trust me. And now I've done nothing else to export phosphate from my tank. You know, of course, I don't feed a bunch. You know, food is a huge phosphate source in your system. And I know I don't have a ton of algae in my system anymore. I mean, I have no hair algae and I may have some small algae on my rock work, but it's mostly coralline, you know, or just normal live rock. I don't have any algae issues in my system. Now, with that being said, let me address this because I know some people are warning, hey, you have bryopsis, right? That bryopsis, it's, I think this further supports what I was thinking. It was growing in the patches of GSP that was folding over on top of itself or the branching parts. Once I cut those portions out of my tank and removed them, have not seen the bryopsis come back since. Now, I'm knocking on wood, but I'm thinking, you know, I may be maybe on the right track here, guys, because I haven't seen it come back at all, actually, anywhere else in my tank. So with that being said, and like I said, a small amount of food in my system, maybe the cores are sucking up some and, and the algae is sucking up some from the water. But overall, I'm going to give the credit to the algae scrubber. And moving forward, we're going to further support this. You know, I got the Hannah checker now. I will be checking my phosphates, you know, on a regular basis for you guys and documenting that for anyone that's still a non-believer. And for anyone that is curious about an algae scrubber, keep in mind, the algae scrubber size, you don't have to get the biggest one you can find. The size of your algae scrubber is going to depend on the nutrients in your tank. You know, how much you feed your tank, how much livestock you have in your tank, and just your phosphate issue altogether. You got a bunch of phosphates, you're going to need a bigger scrubber. And once you get your phosphates in check, a smaller scrubber is going to do just like in my system so moving forward every tank definitely going to have some kind of version of an algae scrubber whether i build one myself or whether i purchase one so for anyone that has any other questions or curious or you know you disagree with this video hey it's all good baby drop me a comment down below let's have a conversation about it let me know what you think so i'm gonna cut this vid here guys i think this is good food for thought and as always hey you guys definitely like, comment, subscribe. You guys do what y'all do. Y'all be easy and happy reefing.